Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa. Welcome to today's edition of Managing PostgreSQL Database on Google Cloud. For today, we want to explore configure replication and enable point-in-time recovery for Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL. But before we dive in, I'll give a quick overview of what replication and point-in-time recovery means. Replication and point-in-time recovery are two important features for database reliability and disaster recovery. Replications typically create a copy of the database on one or more servers. This copy can be used to maintain a read-only replica of the database for performance or analytical purposes, or it can be used to fail over in the event of a failure of the primary database or of the primary server. Point-in-time recovery allows you to restore the database to a specific point in time, such as before a data corruption event or a human error. This can be useful for recovering from data loss or from rolling back unauthorized changes. Replication and point-in-time recovery are sometimes used together to provide a comprehensive data recovery solution or a comprehensive disaster recovery solution. For example, you could replicate your database to a secondary server in a different location. This way, if the primary server fails, you can quickly switch to the secondary server and minimize downtime. You can also use point-in-time recovery to restore the database to a specific point in time before the failure. Here are some specific benefits of replication and point-in-time recovery for database. It can lead to improved reliability, it can lead to reduced downtime, and it can also lead to data loss prevention. Sometimes it also helps in compliance because many industries have compliance requirements that mandate the use of replication and point-in-time recovery to protect sensitive data. So replication and point-in-time are sort of essential features for database that need reliability, availability, and security. So let's cite some examples of where replication and point-in-time recovery can be used in the real world. A financial service company might use replication to maintain a read-only replica of its database for analytical purposes. This would allow the company to run complex queries on the, read on the replica without impacting the performance of the primary database. An e-commerce company might also use replication and point-in-time recovery to protect its database from data loss. The company could replicate the database to a secondary server in a different location. In the event of a failure of the primary server, the company could quickly switch to the secondary server and continue processing order. Also in the healthcare, a healthcare organization might use replication and point-in-time recovery to comply with reg regulations that protect patient data. The organization could replicate the database to a secondary server, a different location, and regularly back up the database. This would allow the organization to quickly restore the database to a specific point in time in the event of a data breach or other incident. So these are just some real-life examples of where point-in-time recovery or replication can be used, or even using both of them together. So for this lab, we we'll would configure and test point-in-time recovery for a cloud SQL, for Postgres SQL instance. And one thing you should notice that a point-in-time recovery always creates a new instance. You cannot perform a point-in-time recovery to an existing instance. So the, insta the new instance, it just inherits the settings of the source instance. So I think that's um, a good overview. Let's get started with our lab. Click on Start Lab. Yeah, so I'll launch this with the required credits. Then I'll open my lab in an incognito window so I don't end up running it on my personal account. Click on Next. Then copy the password here. Paste your password here. Next also. Yeah, I understand this. Yeah, so this is my dashboard. And I will agree to the terms and service. After agreeing to the terms and service, then let's start following the instruction as required by this lab. 
So we've done the setup and requirements. That's fine. And the target audience for this lab is for Postgres SQL database administrators. And it is designed to give professional hands-on experience, setting up and configuring Google Cloud resources to support Postgres SQL, especially the one related to replication and point in time recovery. So for tax one, we want to enable backups on Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL instance. So a Postgres SQL instance has been created for us on Cloud SQL. So let's just go to it and see the details that are there. So let's display the instance details that has been created for us. So on our Cloud Shell, you activate your Cloud Shell. After activating your Cloud Shell, you wait for your Cloud Shell to spin up. So I'll click on continue. So it's provisioning our Cloud Shell machine. And when it's done, it would also connect to our Cloud Shell instance. Yeah, so here we are on our Cloud Shell. So let's paste the command we just copied. Um, we exported Postgre orders to Cloud SQL instance. So any anytime we call this Cloud SQL instance, it's going to indir indirectly input the Postgre orders. So let's click this. Authorize this. So the Postgre iPhone orders is the name of the instance that has been created for us. So here we have, you can see, this is the backend type, second gen, connection name, create time, a whole lot. So almost all the details that you need there are here. You can just take a look at that. You can see the version of the database that is on it. So Postgre 13, Postgre 13, 10. So that's um, typically what we want here. And, and the state, it's in a runnable state. So we are good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to <clears throat> check the current time. So let's see the current time that we are currently so that we can create a backup before that current time. So I'm just going to use this command to get the current time I have now. So you can see this is 622 UTC currently. And what I'm going to do is, so this next command, when I copy it, I want to configure a backup on the instance that has been created for us. and you typically want to use you know, typically want to back up to a time in, in the past and not in the future so i'm just going to go one hour back of this by using 0522 you can feel free to go 30 minutes or there about so you can see it's creating our backup and here we are so you can see it has configured the backup to the start time of 522 which is one hour before my current time and um, it is typically done so we are good to go so yeah this is just what they are saying try to make sure you use a time in the past okay that's good so the next thing we want to do is let's confirm if the changes that we have done actually get uh, implemented so let's paste this command here enter and you can see you can you can see the values you can see the result that is showing so the backup retention settings is it will retain backup for um seven days and the start time for the backup is still 522 like i said and it will it will do the log retention also for seven days so we are good to go let's see if we've completed this tax yeah tax complete so for tax two we want to enable and run point in time recovery so when you want to enable and run point in time recovery as we said that point in time recovery would create a new instance and it's just going to um inherit the configurations and the settings of the previous instance or of the source instance so the first thing we want to do is let's enable point in time recovery on the instance that we are so it's going to automatically like help us create another instance when when we are done so copy that command and paste this here click on enter so this may take a while fast forward it and see at the end Here we are and you can see that we are done it has um, successfully configured that so the next thing we want to do is we want to make changes to our cloud sql for postgre sql instance See, we've done a point in time recovery so we'll make a change when we make a change we want a scenario whereby we want to restore back to the database details at a particular time before the time that the backup was done 
so that's typically um, what we want to do okay so to do that the next thing we'll do is come here on our cloud shell click on our, when we click on our cloud shell this is our instance you click into our instance after clicking into our instance then we open our instance we want to connect to that particular database so let's open the cloud shell and we are here we click on enter after clicking on enter it would allow list our ip for about five minutes and after that we have to input our password so let's just copy our password the password yeah the password used when configuring this was super secret okay so i'll fast forward it and see at the end so now we can input our password let's input our password here this typically takes less than five minutes so here we are on our database instance so let's move to a database that we want let's move to the other database with this command so here we have honda others and also the same password likewise super secret copy it once again make sure you don't have any additional white space while using it enter and now i'm inside the other database so now that i'm inside the other database let's check the current things we have on it so to just copy this command under the distribution center table in our other database when i run this command you can see that there are 10 rows i can also view the details of the data inside by using this command and um, i'm just going to remove the count okay there should be a space here i'll strike on enter once again and you can see when you move this thing up you can see the details that are here you can see which is what we want and yeah that's that's what we want for now so the next thing we want to do is um now let's check the time that we have let's check the current time that we are now then enable the point in time recovery so to check the current time and when you are using the when you are enabling point, point in time recovery you have to use a timestamp format to allocate your time and it has to be in rfc 3339 format so copy this and when i copy this i'll go back here and click on the new tab so i don't want to spoil what's going on there and i'll just then um, click here to check the time that i actually have in this part so this is the current time in rfc 33 39 format and i'm just going to wait a while so me waiting a while is me talking i want to wait a while so that i can exceed this timestamp. and when i'm enabling the point in time recovery it's going to be so this time will now be in the past the time this time will be in the past so i think um we've spoken for a little bit so like one minute is fine and you can come back here and let's insert values so let's insert values into our database so you can see that the value we are inserting into our database now it would, we would insert it past this time we would have inserted it past this time so now we are back in our other database so what we can just do is and paste it here so click enter you can see that it has inserted one more row. so this is the command i insert insert into the table this is the table name it's inserted these values and here we are with 11 rows so let's see everything once again let's see everything in there with the select star from distribution center and now you notice that we have 11 rows before we had 10 now we have 11 so which shows that um we are good to go so the current database now it's on 11 which is the source database so let's do a point in time recovery at the time when this database was 10 and not the time when it was and not this current time when it's 11 so what we are going to do for that i can just um, exit this guy and um, yeah let's exit it so after exiting so let's perform a point in time recovery so you know we've enabled point in time recovery before so let's perform it now and then um, come here paste this command and don't forget the timestamp that we checked then so the timestamp it was after we checked the timestamp that we made that change so we want to see the database as at this time 
which was also the time that um, the database was at 10 rows so in between the single quotes paste the timestamp then click on enter so it typically takes a whole lot of time when you are doing a point in time recovery like 10 minutes a day about so i'm also going to fast forward it and see at the end but before that are being created so under this all instance click on all instance and you can see that this is the postgres order point in time recovery that has been created so you can see export name instance postgres order point in time recovery and this is the time this is the name of the instance that is being created and it's a point in time recovery of this one as the source so when you click on it you would notice that it is not yet done because this command is still working so at the time that this command is done this would also be done so now i'll just then um, fast forward it and see you at the end yes um you can see it's completed and when it's get complete this part also shows them um, completed and now if you view the all instance again you'd see it as a fully fleshed instance so you can click this once again and yeah also the details of our new instance you can see database version postgres 13 and this is the primary address this is the private address and it's in a runnable state so here is our instance here is our new um, instance our point in time recovery instance so let's check if we've completed this and this should be complete yeah complete so for the last tax we want to confirm the database has been restored to the current point in time um to the correct point in time yeah so what we are going to do is now is that we are currently on our point in time recovered instance please don't if you use this one if you use this one this is still the source instance if you check it you would see 11 details so just go to the point in time recovery recovery instance which is this one so when you are there you would connect to the instance by opening the cloud shell and you click on enter when you click on enter it would allow list your ip for five minutes yeah so let's copy our password now which is the super secret we copied before so we are here the next thing we want to do is we want to go into the other database so the others database by using this command so we are in the others we we'll paste the password once again which is super secret make sure you copy the exclamation mark with it and do not copy any white space enter so now we are inside the others database and take note of the table that we checked the previous time which is the distribution center so we'll call this command and just here and when you click on enter you can see 10 rows which is what we expect because the point in time recovery we did on the database was when it was in 10 rows so let's see the details you can see the details and for the sake of this lab i would also go into the source once again so that you can see it before i round up that's just um, additional paste this and you can see we have um, 10 rows so to um clear your doubts let's exit let's exit this guy by using this command okay we've exited the database so let's go to the previous source instance let's just verify, verify things so here is our source instance click on it let's connect to it once again when we connect to it enter it will allow list our IP. After allowing listing our IP, we would paste the super secret password. So let me copy it. So because we said the settings is going to inherit the same settings as the previous instance, so that's why you can still see that the password is still the same thing. Let's wait for it to allow list. Let's paste our password now so here we've pasted our password so we can go into the others database 
paste the normal password once again so now we are in our other database so the next thing we want to do is we can just copy this count command here so copy this command paste it here so you can see we have 11 rows and the source database should have 11 rows so when we connect that to the replica you can see it was 10 rows so we can also view the stuff that are there so let's view it strike on enter and you can see here we have the 11 rows that should it's just to show that um, our point in time recovery works yeah so i think that's all for this lab let's see if we've completed our progress our progress is complete and this should show um 100 in a bit so congratulations for joining us on this lab so you've configured and tested and um, point in time recovery for cloud sql for postgresql so if this is taking time you can just go there and initiate it by yourself so since this is complete this will also get completed so we have our 20 and that's 100 so thanks very much for staying true to the end of this lab if you enjoyed this lab please give it a thumbs up like it subscribe to my channel share with your loved ones and let them see how you can configure replication and enable point in time recovery for cloud sql for postgres sql so do check out my channel for more videos bye for now